Hello everyone and welcome to my channel where I talk about weapons from movies, games and TV shows and compare them to real life examples. In this video, we are going to talk about something explosive, under barrel grenade launchers. I'll tell you how they first appeared, how effective they can be in combat and also reveal some of their downsides. And of course, we'll answer the question everyone's been dying to know, which is cooler? the M16 or the AK grenade launcher. So grab some popcorn and watch till the end and don't forget to give us a like. I bet you're curious to know why the first under barrel grenade launchers came to be, right? Well, back in World War I, the military noticed something strange. There was a dead zone between the farthest distance a soldier could throw a grenade, around 50 meters or 150 feet, and the closest distance a mortar could fire, about 150 meters or 500 feet. And you know what that means? The poor infantry had no way to take out enemy firing points at that distance except with their trusty old machine guns. Can you imagine? It was a real problem. In fact, some soldiers had to risk their lives to get up close and personal with the enemy under a hail of bullets and explosions just to get close enough to toss a grenade. That's some serious bravery right there. The earliest precursor to the under-barrel grenade launchers were rifle grenades, which were already being used in muzzle-loaded grenade launchers during World War I. For example, the Germans actively used some weird-looking attachment, which could be mounted on the Mauser 98K carbine as well as many other rifles of that time. To launch grenades, blank cartridges were used, sometimes with an increased charge of gunpowder. But the catch was that these were essentially over-barrel grenade launchers as they were attached directly to the barrel of the weapon. And the main drawback of rifle grenades was the inability to shoot the weapon normally without first removing the attachment or firing the grenade. Thus, soldiers had a relatively universal weapon but were greatly limited in their ability to use it. Later during World War II, the German came up with their own handheld grenade launchers called the Kampfpistole, which looked like a pistol and fired various types of grenades. Then, during the Vietnam War, the Americans joined in with their M79. But back in the late 60s, the US Army was like, hey, we need an under-barrel grenade launcher for our brand new M16 assault rifle. So they hooked up with a company called AAI to make it happen. The first batch of grenade launchers, the M203, was shipped off to Vietnam for testing in 1970, and the army loved them so much they ordered a whole bunch more. The icing on the cake? The order was eventually snagged by Colt, a total legend in the gun world. Now, let's get down to business and talk about how these things actually work. Ready for this? It's super simple. Take the M203 for example. All you've got is a barrel to load a special grenade, a firing pin that hits the cap of the grenade, and a trigger with a safety catch. That's it. Pull the trigger and boom! The grenade flies out and makes the enemy wish they were somewhere else. But the real heart of the underbarrel grenade launcher is the grenade it fires, and the M203 uses 40 by 46 mm grenade rounds. There are a ton of different type of grenades too. For example, there's the M397, which upon landing fires a grenade up in the air before exploding. And then there are non-lethal options like flashbang grenades or rubber bullets. Tear gas is also a popular choice for dispersing riots and other large crowds. But just like with the AK, which was always the main competitor for the M16, the same was true for the under-barrel grenade launcher game. On the US side, it was the M203, while on the Russian side, it was the GP25 that could be mounted on any Kalashnikov assault rifle. The first Russian-made underbarrel grenade launcher was adopted in 1978. It could be attached to various types of AK rifles and other Russian-made guns. Later modifications included the GP30 and the GP39, which are still used by many military units today. The GP25 fires our own VOG-25 grenades which, like the American grenades, come in a bunch of different variations. For example, there's the VOG 25P, which spits out an explosive charge in the air before detonating upon contact with the surface. 
There are also various types of smoke grenades like the VDG-40 or the Flashbang ASZ-40. And inevitably, the question arises, if there's the American M203 and the Russian GP25, which one is actually better? Let's find out. Let's start with the weight, where the M203 takes the lead, weighing in at 1.36 kg compared to the GP25's 1.5 kg, which is 3 pounds versus 3.3 pounds respectively. The barrel length of the M203 is also longer, almost three times longer, meaning that in theory, it could shoot three times farther, measuring almost 30 centimeters compared to the GP25's 12 centimeters, which is 11 inches versus five inches. But then the magic begins, and you'll understand why. Grenade caliber? The same, at 40 millimeters. The rate of fire is almost identical for both the M203 and the GP25 at about six shots per minute. And the initial velocity of the projectile is the same too. Well, at least the maximum range of the projectile should be at least two to three times farther for the M203 than for the GP25, given that the M203 has a barrel three times longer. But no, the maximum range for both is 400 meters or 437 yards. And that's where the question arises. How did this happen? Well, it seems that the Russian guys came up with grenades for under-barrel grenade launchers that are way cooler than the Americans, and that's a fact. To give you an idea, in 1978, comparative tests were conducted with the GP25 grenade launcher firing VOG-25 grenades and the 40mm under-barrel grenade launcher M203 firing M406 rounds installed on the M16A1 rifle. So the results are in, and it turns out the Soviet-made GP25 grenade launcher with its VOG-25 rounds is a winner over the American-made M203 with its M406 rounds. During tests, the VOG-25 rounds were found to be three to four times more accurate than the M406 rounds, hitting targets more frequently in a tactical field that simulated live enemy forces. And even at range, the VOG rounds proved to be more effective. So as it turns out, when it comes to grenade launchers and ammo, the Soviets had a trick up their sleeve and it looks like they won this battle. And now let's talk about the downsides of using an under-barrel grenade launcher and why some of the soldiers might even hate to use it. It's not all sunshine and rainbows, folks. Sure, it's cool to attach one to your rifle and blow stuff up, but there are some drawbacks to consider. First of all, let's talk about the extra weight. Adding a grenade launcher to your rifle makes it around 50% heavier, which can be pretty tiring to carry around during long battles, so don't expect to see every soldier rocking a grenade launcher in real life. And if you're using the American M203, it's also pretty long and bulky, which can make it difficult to move around in tight spaces or even get in and out of vehicles. Plus, some soldiers have complained that the M203 is loud and clunky, this is due to the ring on which the weapon strap is attached, which constantly hits the grenade launcher, making unpleasant sounds when walking and hindering you from quietly sneaking up on the enemy. And sometimes the launcher can even fall off your gun after a few shots, which is definitely not ideal in combat. So while grenade launchers are a cool addition to your arsenal, they're not always the best choice for every situation. Just something to keep in mind. Now, let's talk about video games and how they portray under-barrel grenade launchers. If we start with the American M203, it's no surprise that it appears in the Call of Duty series. Specifically, let's look at the multiplayer mode in Warzone, where you can attach the M203 to various weapons. In the game, the grenade launcher shoots pretty far, unlike in previous versions of the game. It also has decent damage, but it may not always be enough to kill an enemy with one shot, unlike in real life, where a direct hit from a fragmentation grenade is usually fatal. Unfortunately, in Warzone, you can't choose the type of ammunition for the M203, and it always shoots fragmentation grenades, whereas in real life, these types of launchers are primarily used for smoke and flashbang grenades. Now, let's talk about the Russian GP25 and how it's portrayed in Escape from Tarkov. The game features the newer version of the GP34 with an extended barrel, just like in real life. 
you can attach the GP34 to almost all AK series rifles in the game, just like in real life. However, the game only includes one type of grenade for the launcher, the VOG25, even though there are many different types of grenades available in real life, such as smoke and flashbangs. We hope the game developers add more options for grenade types in the future. As for the range in the game, there's nothing wrong with it. The underbarrel launcher can shoot up to 400 meters just like in real life. But the situation with damage is not entirely clear. Sometimes it explodes the enemy with the first shot and sometimes it doesn't. Whereas in reality, a single VOG grenade can bring down an entire wall. So Tarkov surprised us unpleasantly this time. Have you encountered these underbarrel grenade launchers in other video games? And where did they leave the most significant impression on you? Share your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to give us a thumbs up.